Hi everyone, this is Ida of Created to Create. Welcome back to my channel. If you are not 18 years or older, this video content is not intended for you. Um, I shared a sneak peek of this teapot the other day, uh, and I wanted to share with you how I made this into a, not just a card, but a gift card holder. My friend Jackie gifted me uh, these die cuts, and she embossed the teapot, or she stamped it out in colors. I think they're all embossed, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I love this little yellow one. I hardly ever do anything with yellow. Uh, she had already sent me this, already layered up. The only thing I did to the flowers are add the little diamond dots. Then I added one of my little bees from Carnation Crafts. And uh, I did afterwards uh, buy the... I broke down, guys, and... Um, and did uh, fall down the rabbit hole and I bought the teapot and the stamp set that goes with it. So it does come with a couple of um, sentiments and so I was able to cut out this die cut and add the sentiment to it. It says sharing together is our special tea. Special tea. So I really like the way this came out and she did send me the base to it. Um, the only thing about this die that this piece that cuts out, you have to manually put it in there and tape it down. And sometimes it's hard to get it exactly right on everything. Uh, but you know, if you tape it together well enough, I think you'll, you'll be all right. So here is the back of the card. She sent me the base, this piece that's already created into a card. And then she sent me the top portion that you layer on top. And what I did was I created a gift, a holder for a gift card. And there's two ways to do that. You can cut a little rectangle piece, uh, cut, put in your slot die and cut the slots to hold the card and cut two lids and put glue onto the front and to the back, which was the first way I did it. But then I decided that I wanted to do it a little bit differently. And uh, here is the other one that I did. And uh, I did it just in one piece using the die and I did emboss it as well and I love the way it looks embossed because sometimes you'll get little uh, dents and scratches that transfer from your cutting plate onto your cardstock but when you emboss those kind of seem to disappear so I did this with a one piece but make sure to use at least 110 pound cardstock and if you can get something stronger that's even better so um, anyway this does hold the gift card and it's just as wide just wide enough to maybe even a little shorter uh more narrow than the gift card but i'm going to share with you how i created it uh you're going to need um let me put this back in i just love the way this one came out and i had a little trouble at first because the opening to the teapot is really narrow so Trying to get a card in there was kind of difficult. Trying to get a card in there was kind of difficult because of the opening right here uh, on the this shape on the teapot. And the, the cards are pretty, uh, they're not real wide, but they about take all the room. So I had to create a little track on the sides where the card would slide but there was little tracks here that would house it and the way I did that uh, I'm going to share with you how I did that and I love the fact that these little teapots if you send it to somebody they stand up so let me share with you how I created I had already started recording on this one and I was having trouble lining up so I deleted the video but let's let's start all over again I'm doing this for you guys so you can see how I did it so I'm going to take, and the teapot that I'm using, I'm sorry, I didn't say it's the Heartfelt Creations one. So I'm going to take this piece, and let me get my cutting plates. I use the Empress, guys, and I do cut right into the, the magnetic sheet because I feel like it doesn't uh, do as much damage to the cutting blade per se if I were cutting into the hard acrylic cutting uh, board plate so I like to cut into the magnet so what you're going to do is you're going to take a piece of paper that measures at least three and a half inches wide and five and a half inches long 
and you're going to line up the lid to your teapot to the top of that to the top of the paper and then these two little uh, dents here or tabs those you want to try and line your paper up where it's in the middle that's what you want to do there now if I was going to cut the whole thing I would have to add this extra piece right here to cut out the and I'm not even sure where it would go I guess it would go about there uh, to cut out that other piece and I'm going to leave it in there just to try it out because I've never used it so I want to try it out so you would leave that in there and um, so make sure that the tabs are evenly spaced on either side of the paper and that the top of your lid is on top as you can see the bottom my paper is a little short but that's okay because I don't need anything that big all I need is the little piece that I cut out remember five and a half inches tall let me run it through my machine and let's see what we get So here is my die cut. Take my teapot off. And we're still going to trim off that little piece. That little piece of paper, we're still going to trim it off. So what we want to do, what you want to do is you want to cut into your lid. These little dot circles, bumps right here, are the tips on your lid. So I'm just going to kind of follow more or less where I think it would be. And cut in about half an inch from this, from the edge here. In. And I'm going to do that on both sides. So I'm just going to cut in about half an inch. And you're going to want to trim that off. So I'm just going to use my scissors. And hopefully I will get it right. And I am using heavyweight cardstock. I went a little too far in, but not bad. Nothing major. If you have a paper trimmer like a Fiskars or something like that, you can use that. So I'm going to do the same in the other side. I'm going to just slide my scissors in there. And I'm going to cut straight down. And all these are just scraps. I mean, you, I could probably get a word or something out of there. And I think that on this side, I'm going to cut a little bit more. Because you can see there's more here than here. So I'm going to trim it even a little bit more. It is not really necessary, but it's a me thing. I'm going to use the smaller scissors right here. Just cut it a little bit more. And there we have created the piece that is going to hold your gift card. And what I use is by Lawn Fawn, which is this one right here. And it cuts the pockets and it cuts the slits to hold the card. So I'm using this long one that's going to cut the two tabs that will hold the card now you don't want to put this all the way to the bottom of your paper because if you do it's going to cut it out completely and you don't want it to do that so i'm going to line up probably about a quarter inch up and then i'm going to set it down right there and because i'm using my magnetic i don't have to worry about it shifting or adding uh, washi tape but if you're using not using that, then you want to add washi tape. So I'm going to set that there, and I'm going to run it through my machine. Now, I'm not going to use this one because I already have two that I cut out. But I just wanted to share with you the process on how I did that. Now, 
by doing this, see all the marks on my uh, plate? Some of these transfer onto my paper that I cut, and mostly it's here in the middle. But if I were to emboss it, you wouldn't be able to see that. It would minimize that. If you're not going to emboss it, I recommend that you get a sheet of computer paper, fold it in half, and put lay it down first, and then lay your piece of paper down. That way any marks will transfer onto the printer paper and not onto your actual cardstock. So that is it for the gift card holder. And now I'm going to show you how I I'm going to show you how I do the the little track. And the way I do that, you only need a strip of paper that measures 1 inch by I'm going to say 1 inch by 2 and a half inches. So this measures three and a half, so two and a half. So there's one. And oh, maybe there. Looks like it moved, but it's okay. You're not going to see this. You are not going to be able to see this. And I'm going to, I'm just going to fold it in half, guys. You can score it if you like. I'm just going to fold it because it's such a little piece. And I'm going to get my bone folder and burnish it. I thought I had my bone folder out. Here it is. And I'm going to burnish it. I mean, if you prefer a more narrow one, you can do it a half an inch and score down a quarter of an inch. So, here's my little, my little hinge or track for my, let me take out another teapot because I used the one that I was going to show you with. So, let's take out another one. See, my friend gifted me all these um, Jackie's Metal Art 001 here on YouTube. And when she sent me a bunch of die cuts, she sent me this teapot uh, before I had it and um, so I have some that are already done look at this beautiful teal color teapot so and then here's the base she folded a piece of cardstock in half and lined it up where right right above the little indentations for the lid uh, making sure not to line not to cut up here fold it folded it in half and there is your base card for your teapot now the problem is that when we go to put in a card for example if I was going to put this card in here see how I would hardly have any room to glue down to hold my uh, pocket together let's call I'm gonna call it a pocket so you you know you don't want your card to fall out or be seen on either side you want it to stay within the perimeters of the teapot and the way we're going to do that is we're going to add these little hinges and we're going to add them below the tabs on the lid because we want the lid to slide we want our lid to be able to slide down and line up right on top of that lid and if this were too high it wouldn't be able to come down. Your card holder wouldn't be able to go down as much as you need it to. So this is where I'm going to need it. So I'm going to give myself, I'm going to line it within the teapot. I don't want anything sticking out. So that tells me that, see right here, it goes straight. I want that to curve out like this. So I need to put a slit right there. And then I want it, it goes straight right here. And I want it to start curving out right here because see how this comes out? I hope you can see how this comes out. I want it to curve out. So I'm going to put a slit there and probably one there. And you can use a pencil to mark that because nobody's going to see that. Don't cut all the way to your score lines, just right before your score lines. And now we can glue this piece down. We're going to add glue to it and glue it down. Remember that we're going to stay below the te the notches on the lid because we do not want our 
our teapot not to be able to come all the way down. So I'm staying below the lid, but look, I can now pull this out and bend it following the line on the teapot. See how now my, my paper is curved? That's because of these notches that allow me to pull it out and glue it down. And when I go to put in my, my teapot, it will go as far as I need it to go because see it's below the, the little notch on the lid. So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. We're gonna put our piece of paper down. Let me turn it this way. And um, I hope you guys can see, let me lower it down some. I want you to get a close view of what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna line it up below the notch where the teapot is and I'm gonna want it to curve out. I'm gonna want it to curve out here. I'm gonna want it to start curving out here. And see how this curves out? Well, I want this paper to do the same thing. So I'm gonna put in a couple more notches just so my, my paper can curve. And you'll get it. When you start doing it, uh, you'll get the gist of it. And if you're only gluing down small sections at a time, it'll give you a good idea of where you need to uh, put your other little cut in. So I'm adding glue, not to the area where it's cut, but the little tabs in between. Because you want to make sure that that little area where you cut can curve out. Okay. So I'm going to go right below and I can just be holding this down. See how I'm turning it by holding the edge? And there you go guys. There is my track that's going to hold that will allow my gift card and these are not going to be stuck like this. These are actually going to be glued to the lid so you'll be able to slide your card in and out without too much trouble and you will be able to slide it in as far as you need it to go because of how we put how low we position the top of this uh, little I'm gonna call it a track so there will be able to do we'll be able to do that but when you add glue to add the top piece make sure you don't put it in the cut lines just on the little tabs so now we're going to take the top part and line it up. Hopefully I can line up. Oh, there one more thing before I do that. I'm going to go ahead and put this in here and line it up with the little tabs on the lid. And what that's going to do, that's going to give me an idea of the perimeter where I'm not supposed to add glue. So I'm gonna hold it there and I'm going to give myself just I'm, I'm gonna make it wider than it needs to be because my gift card is a little bit wider so I'm gonna give myself just and how a line on how wide and how low I need to go just just a guide as a guide so I know that when I put my tab in there with my card, see where I put my lines? I gave myself enough room that my card will not be blocked from sliding all the way down where I need it to go. So now let's try and line this up. I had difficulty with the other one. Uh, let me see if I can get this one just right. That looks pretty good. Yeah. So the way I glue my pieces down, I like to just line it up, then apply pressure, whether it's to the bottom or to the top. In this case, I'm gonna apply pressure to the top and I'm gonna lift up the bottom and hold it with my thumb. And I'm gonna add glue to this bottom portion of my teapot. making sure 
to get at least these first tabs and you know as far as I can go up and then I'm going to set this down and I'm going to glue it down now it's not going to shift when I go to glue the top portion it's not going to shift and I don't have to worry about that so now I'm going to lift this up and I'm going to I'm going to glue the rest of this down and I'm getting loud guys because I hear my husband being loud over there and I don't want y'all to to hear him so now I'm going to add glue to the rest of these tabs, making sure not to get it inside the tabs and on the handle right here. That's good enough. Don't put any on these tabs. You don't want to put any there because then you're going to have problems with uh, your card not being wide enough to house your, your portion that's going to hold the the card so there it is now I'm going to get my card and I'm going to share with you and I'm going to I'm not going to decorate everything or anything I just wanted to share with you how I did that so I'm going to grab the first one I made I'm going to put a card in it and show you how it will hold this and it will be able to slide in everything's glued down you don't have to worry about your card falling off to the side because you have that little track here that's glued down to the base of, to your card and to your panel in the front so all you do is slide it in right behind the the lid right here and it should slide in without too much trouble there it is see how nice that looks now I do recommend that you use a heavyweight cardstock at least 110 if not more because you don't want it to buckle up when you're trying to slide it in place uh, especially if you're going to emboss it it kind of tends to weaken it a little bit more but because I use very I think it's 120 pounds what I used uh, I didn't have that kind of trouble even though it's embossed but see how well that fits and it slides perfectly in if I did not put in that little track, I would be able to glue this portion down and this would be pretty secure, but this side would not be secure because there is no handle or extra tabs or anything here. Like I would have to glue like right on the edge and that would be too close to the edge. It wouldn't hold it. So here is the card and how I turned it into a gift card holder. I hope that uh, this helps you. And I hope you understood my directions because I know sometimes um, it's a little confusing. Uh, but by seeing, I hope that some of us are visual learners. I am. And uh, hopefully by just seeing what I did, you'll be able to do it too. And not just for a teapot shape, for any shape that you're using. You can use the same concept for any shape that you want. Thanks for watching. I hope everyone is having a great day and God bless. Bye.